Hello and welcome back to What's Millie Making, my knitting podcast, where I talk about the past, present, and future of my knitting. Today's video is all going to be about future knits because it is my 2024 Make 9. I'll be a little bit late because it is February. So just for clarity's sake, I should share what is a Make 9. It is a list of nine things that you would like to make within a given set period of time. In this case, 2024. Some people maybe follow their list to a T and then some people just kind of use them as a loose guide. I'm definitely in that party. I picked nine garments or more specifically sweaters. I would like to knit for, with yarn that I already have in stash. I really don't expect to knit all of them, especially because some of them are quite complicated. I also just get distracted by what other people are knitting, what other pattern, new patterns are coming out, new yarn, etc, etc. So my nine sweaters can be split into three main categories. First is closet staple slash basics. Second is textured knit. And third is color work. So as I go through the list, I will share why I picked each pattern, the yarn that I chose for it, and why I picked that yarn. So let us start with closet staples. Both of the closet staples are actually patterns that I've already knit and I wear them so much, I thought I'd knit them again, which I've actually never done before. Usually I'll knit something and then I'm ready to move on to the next thing. And if you see me looking down, it's because I took notes because I don't want to forget the patterns and the things I wanted to say about them. Next up we have sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is an all over stockinette sweater in a worsted weight yarn and so one thing I would also like to explore more this year are different sweater constructions and kind of analyzing why I like the fit of certain sweaters slash styles and why I don't like the fit of others. For instance, I'm not the biggest fan of circular yoke sweaters and I think it's because they kind of remind me of like a mushroom in that they're tight around the like yoke shoulder area and then just go straight down. I don't know. It's not flattering on my body type. I do know that I really like the fit of this sweater pattern. It is a map. It is either a modified drop shoulder or a modified set and sleeve. I don't really know the proper terminology. It's so you cast on as if you were working like a drop shoulder sweater, sweater, but then you have some shaping around the armholes. And then when you cast on the arms, you do some short rows to shape the sweater sleeve to, I guess, mimic the look of a set-in sleeve and it just gets rid of some of the excess fabric that you might get with a traditional drop shoulder sweater. But it also is, I guess, simpler than a traditional set-in sleeve which you would have to sew in or I guess like set in. And I know that I like that fit because I wear it a lot. It's just, just really comfortable and easy to wear. I wear it with dresses, skirts, pants, you name it, I wear it. I did knit my first version in a beige and when I was knitting it, I didn't think I, I didn't know how much wear I would get out of it. Even though beige is a neutral, I'm not really a beige girly. So I thought I would knit it in another color to see like, is it just the color that makes it wearable for me? Is it the shape? Is it a combination of the two? We shall see. So for this new version for 2024 i will be knitting it in this yarn combination so first up we have newton which is an unspun yarn from the brand honor Ock air and this is in their shade amanita i'm obsessed with this color it is so bright and vibrant and i've honestly just been seeing red sweaters everywhere on instagram on pinterest in real life like i feel like a bright red was definitely the color of fall winter 2023 2024 and whenever i think about either like making or even buying something trendy i try to analyze if this wasn't trendy would i still like it and i can 100 percent say yes with this red because i have other things in my closet that are similar shades of red i bought them when they weren't trendy i wore them when they weren't trendy and i generally do enjoy this color so holding together with this I will be using the, I don't know if it's Isaiah or Isagar Silk Mohair in the colorway 32 Red. I honestly think this is one of the softest mohairs out there. I've only knit it, knit with 
different shades of this like once or twice but it's so soft and I know like a lot of I think a lot of the European knitting podcasts that I've seen they mention how Isagar is so much more expensive than other brands but honestly I feel like silk mohair in the US is just kind of expensive period the most affordable one that I can find near me is knitting for olive which is around $12 a ball but most of the silk mohairs are similar to this price range and actually buying hand dyed silk mohair often is cheaper than buying commercially dyed silk mohair so that's why I don't mind buying this Isagara silk mohair now and again because it's just so soft. Also I bought this at a store local to me but if you buy it online from a European retailer it is usually considerably cheaper and I did buy a different Surrey's lace but it just it didn't match so a lot of times what I like to do is I will look on Ravelry people's projects to see what other people are using with the same yarn color that I have to get an idea of what I could get and I saw a few people making projects with this specific yarn combo and they blended in really really nicely and that's why I bought this last year and I bought this yarn specifically for this sweater and it's going to happen it was going to be my new year's cast on but i got sidetracked but it's going to happen it's happening soon my second basic sweater that i would like to knit i have also already knit this sweater it is the trotto sweater by petite knit and i knit one in 2022 this is another one this is probably flat out my most worn sweater and my second most worn second or third because i do wear my scarf and hat a lot for like practical purposes so let's say it's my third most worn hand knit overall this and one of the other sweaters on my patterns are one of the patterns one of the sweater patterns on this list have been on my to make list since i first joined ravelry slash like started knitting in early 2022 and like I was just absolutely obsessed and I can say this sweater started my love for all things Noro. So the version that I made previously, I wore it last year to... Is this relevant? Anyways, I wore it last year to New Jersey World Wool Walk and I got so many questions about the pattern and I am not above external validation. Uh, as I was mentioning, I would like to know more, learn more about sweater construction this year. I don't really know how this sweater construction is classified because again, you do start knitting... You start the i'm pretty sure you knit a large part of the yoke flat but then you do have raglan shaping so i don't know what sweater construction this is called but i personally find it to be more flattering than a traditional raglan like i'm waiting wearing here as i think it mimics more closely like the shape of your upper body or my upper body I also just remembering it being fun to knit. It does have a lot of half twisted rib. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the half twisted rib on this version, but it's an option. Of course, I have to knit this in Nora again. This is Nora Silk Garden Sock Solo, which is the yarn that Petite Knit uses, but this is in the color T82 slash Ome, which is like a pink tweedy color, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I think on the Noro slash like knitting fever site it says this colorway is discontinued but I really hope not because I feel like this is just as popular as the original Omitama color and I only have three I only, I bought four balls for my first one but I only used three balls and this one I could only find three balls so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. I have a lot of other Noro maybe I will just mix it in i don't know that's a problem for future me and then i'm holding it with some hand dyed silk mohair this is from a local local yarn dyer to me she's in long island i'm in new jersey this is by lily loops and it's just a really pretty soft pink and i think holding it together with, with this noro will just emphasize the pink of this yarn i don't know if i said it but i'm not really a big beige girly but Somehow, the two sweaters that I wear the most are both beige, and I'm trying to determine, 
is it the color or is it just because they're both plain stockinette sweaters because I don't have a lot of plain stockinette sweaters. It also kind of brings me back to this dilemma I have between what I want to knit and what I end up wearing the most. So I like knitting things that, I like knitting sweaters and garments that are a little bit engaging, have something going on. I'm not the biggest fan of miles of endless stockinette. And where am I going with this train of thought? I think a good middle ground for me between not getting bored with using like a beige in an all stockinette sweater, which is very wearable, but is maybe not the most exciting to knit, is to use this like tweedy yarn which i think from in my closet like a light pink is still gonna get a lot of wear but it's maybe more exciting than my other beige sweater i didn't even knit this original one in a beige so i don't know why i keep bringing up this beige thing oh because my sweater number 23 was beige okay so that is the end of the list of the basic slash closet staples. I would like to knit some more stockinette sweaters this year, but I didn't put them on this make nine. So let's move on to textured knits. First textured knit that I would like to make is another one of those sweater patterns that's just been on my list forever. It's the Hannah sweater by Junko Okamoto. And I think it's a really unique take on a cable sweater because you have all different cables and they're all going in different directions. And I just love how this sweater kind of mimics the like patchwork slash quilted look. So the two closet staple sweaters that I had, they are like basic sweater construction just all stockinette stitch right but i picked interesting colors for them whereas this one the construction is going to be i guess like the source of interest and then i picked a more basic color to knit it in in hopes of making it a little bit more easy to wear slash style kind of mimicked by last year i knit the year sweater which is also like a heavily cabled all over cable sweater but i knit it in a dark brown yarn and i just found myself reaching for that more this is my more colorful cabled sweaters i want to knit this hannah sweater in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. My skeins are a little bit squished because they have been packed away since I bought them last April for a different sweater. So this is an American Targi Columbia Wool Worsted Weight by Brooklyn Tweed in the colorway Fossil. So even this, though this is a cream, it does have like little bits of, I wouldn't go as far to call it Tweedy, but there are like little variations in color that make it look interesting in my book. And then another thing I would like to knit more of in 2024 is explore and knit more with American wool. I don't think it's maybe like the most readily available or accessible, but when I have an opportunity to buy it, knit with it, I want to take that opportunity. That is sweater number three on my list. Also another textured knit is the Guernsey Genzer by Sandis Garn. And this is one of the first Sandis Garn patterns I was ever, it might have been the first Sandis Garn pattern I was obsessed with and I just like fell down the rabbit hole and bought a bunch of Sandis Garn sweater pattern books like after obsessively searching for them in English. And then I don't think I have ever actually knit any of them. I just bought the patterns even though I was obsessed with the sweater when I got the sweater pattern and then I didn't I bought the yarn like a few months later and then I saw a lot of people start making it on Instagram and it kind of didn't want to make it made me not want to knit it as much which is like severely delusional main character syndrome behavior but up until that point I think everything that I had knit was just really driven by what I was seeing everybody knit on Instagram and Ravelry, which there's nothing wrong with that. And a large part of my making is still that way. But this felt like, oh, like, this is something other people aren't knitting. It's special, which I said, again, is like Delulu make character syndrome behavior. Then I realized, even if I see everybody online knitting it, the likelihood of me seeing somebody else wearing this exact same sweater is so slim unless i'm like at rhinebeck or vkl or like wool walk or some specific knitters event and even then like who cares i think it's really cool when i see people wearing sweaters i i recognize from online so why would i care that people i saw somebody wearing this sweater anyways after i got over that over that nonsense i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna knit this sweater 
why I like the sweater in the first place, again, it has like an interesting texture all over. I like that it has short repeats, so you're not going to get caught in the slog of like doing the same thing over and over again. So my yarn choice for the sweater is a recommended yarn, which is Santa's Garn Double Sunday and Tin Silk Mohair. It's, I don't remember the name of that shade of green. It's a like jolly green or something like that. I was obsessed with that green for a hot minute. I'm finally excited to knit something in said green. That was a lie. It wasn't just a hot minute that I was obsessed with it. I'm still obsessed with that green. It's such a good green. The next textured knit that is on my Make 9 is quite frankly a pretty similar pattern. It is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit and I've actually already cast this sweater on but it's downstairs so I'm not going to show it right now. Again, it's like an all over textured sweater short pattern repeat so you don't get in this caught in the slog of knitting it again i think this is kind of like a happy medium between what i want to knit and what i end up wearing because even though this is an all over textured knit i think it's a little bit more toned down than a cable knit and also the yarn that i'm using i am knitting it in one strand of Corey dale dk um which is from the hand dyer big little yarn co and a strand of Lang Lace, which is a mohair super kid silk blend lace weight yarn. And another thing I want to do this year is actually knit with the hand dyed yarn I buy and not just hoard it. And I'm still also like determining what are the styles of hand dyed yarn that I like. This, I really like Big Little Yarn Co's colors because her tonals still have like a nice amount of depth to them i realized i don't really care for hand dyed yarn that looks like it was commercially dyed if that makes sense like i love commercially dyed yarn as you can see like i just said i was obsessed with that sand scar however i feel like if i'm paying hand dyed prices i want it to look hand dyed but on the other hand i don't really like crazy variegated colorways especially for garments so i think semi-tonals will be the way forward for me i don't shop from a lot of hand dyers because i don't really care for super wash yarn but i really like that big little yarn co has a bunch of interesting bases and this cordial dk actually has a good amount of yardage and I was still able to hit the expected gauge of the Ingrid sweater with it. So I would buy it again. I actually have a second sweater quantity in a different colorway of this yarn that I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I am slightly playing yarn chicken with the Ingrid sweater because I'm pretty sure I bought the yarn for a medium and then I cast on for a large. Based on the yardage, I should have enough yarn, but that's not what this video is about okay i think i just have one more textured sweater left yes it is the forgive this pronunciation haraboji cardigan i'm pretty sure the pattern is by egg unit haraboji cardigan by egg unit and sincerely apologize for any poor pronunciations of this and anything else in this episode so this is the same designer who made the Yara sweater, the Busan sweater, the Oba sweater, and one other sweater that I cast on also last year. I really, really like their design aesthetic. So similar reason to why I liked the Yara sweater is why I like this sweater. It has one that all over cables, which are really interesting to look at, and two, it has interesting sweater construction. So if you have not knit the Yara sweater, it is knit you start off on one sleeve and then you work your way up and then you cast on sleeve stitches for the body and then you knit the body and then you cast off stitches and you knit the second sleeve. So basically it is a side to side construction versus I think most garments are either top down or bottom up. And this cardigan is knit in a similar way. I would also like to knit more cardigans this year, but I don't necessarily enjoy making them the most. But I feel like with cables, regardless of if you're knitting cables or knitting them flat or in the round, you're going to be doing a lot of purling. So it's not like a cabled sweater. Like pullover is going to be significantly less purling than a cabled cardigan. So maybe the secret sauce to making more cardigans is knitting more textured cardigans. Maybe. As far as my yarn choice goes for this sweater, 
I would like to use actually a yarn similar to the yarn that I used for my Yara sweat. The yarn that I would like to use for this cardigan is Noro Hanui Silk. So again, it uses the undyed Hanui wool, wool, except this one has been spun with silk. It's 65% wool, 35% silk, 150 gram, grams, 150 grams and 330 meters. Hanui Silk is a natural blend of Hanui wool and raw mulberry silk. As I said, I'm having a love affair with Noro. I'm obsessed with their yarns. I love the textures. I love the colors. And this is no exception. Again, you get that really interesting, like, thick, thin texture and the natural color, similar to the Hanui, but, like, this is even softer because of the silk. And this yarn is quite ridiculously expensive but I did get it for like 40% off and I've just been saving it for a special project and I think this cardigan is the one. I love you Noro. And then the second cardigan on my make nine is it's not exactly a pattern that I've knit before so back in 2022 the first gift knit that I ever made in my knitting career was the pressed flowers shawl by Amy Christophers and it's actually the first time I ever did any sort of color work so this isn't strand color work but it actually uses mosaic knitting which is a little bit I'd say it's a little bit more pro it was more approachable to me as a beginner to do mosaic knitting as it's you only need to use one hand you're only knitting with one strand at a time the downside is I think it's considerably slower because you are knitting essentially two rows for every one row of length. However, I think the result is really beautiful. So the Pressed Flowers cardigan is what is on my Make 9. Again, it's by Amy Christophers. And I just think it's beautiful, especially the versions that are made with Spin Cycle. I keep talking about 2022, but some of this stuff has just been on my list since then. And this year, I'd really like to get to it. So in 2022, I, had a, I was really into Spin Cycle yarns. Like, I still really like them. But I think I bought a lot of it in 2022 and I didn't use it because it was so expensive and I was afraid to use it. So this year we're using my spin, not we, I, I am using my spin cycle stash. With that said, I actually have two possibilities with stash yarn for this cardigan. Why did I pick this sweater? Because I like the way it looks and I think I have a lot of like plain dresses just like solid white dresses and I think either color scheme could work with that also if I just wore like a plain t-shirt and a pair of jeans maybe maybe this would work I'm really sorry about the inconsistent lighting in this video it's driving me nuts but like the clouds are coming in and going out coming in and going out and what are you gonna do the pattern is technically written with sport weight yarn but I think the gauge is tight enough that I will get away with fingering without a problem. So option number one is Moondrake Cormo in the shade Espresso. And then the Spin Cycle color changing yarn would be Pale September, which is the exclusive colorway for La Mercerie. Sea Cliff Fingering by Sea Change Fibers, Sea Change Fibers, who is a California based hand dyer and is she sells a lot of her yarn at Brooklyn General which is where I bought this and the contrast color would be Spin Cycle in the Chloe Love Spell. I honestly really like both of these yarn combinations and whichever one I don't make I have like a few other um cardigans that I would like to make. Not on the make nine but that I would like to make at some point and whichever color white is Whichever combo doesn't become pressed cardigans will be the other cardigan. Okay, I think we're nearing the end. I think there's two more patterns left. Let's check that out. There are two more patterns left and both of them are vintage patterns. Both are also color work. So first up, we have the Henri in Pennsylvania sweater, which is quite frankly the magnus opus of my two years of knitting. So I found it last year when I was like in a Ravelry deep dive rabbit hole looking at vintage patterns specifically. The one of my favorites to look at is like the vintage Rowan patterns. It's by 
a designer duo called the Seatons, and I actually looked them up to see if they were still designing because I really liked everything I saw of theirs from like the late 80s, early 90s. Alas, they didn't have any recently published patterns. And then while I was Googling, I'm pretty certain that they went on to found the British clothing brand Toast. I'm not 100% sure, but the names line up, so I think it's them. But don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure. All that said, I really enjoy their overall aesthetic of Toast and their vintage sweater knitting patterns. This pattern is so, so extra. It is basically an intarsia background with an intarsia pattern on top of that. It's a lot, but I think it's so unique and so beautiful that I really, really, really want to make it. So first step was last summer I found the sweater booklet on eBay. Let me see. It's on my bookshelf. So Rowan book number 11 and I'm pretty sure this book is like older than me on, on the back. And I also really like the photography in these vintage pattern books. Here's the pattern. While I was in my Seaton rabbit hole, I actually also purchased one of their sweater pattern books. This is, that Rowan book is a little bit harder to find. I don't think there's that many listings of it, but this book is so easily found. There's dozens of copy on the used book market. It is sweaters from the Seaton collection, more than 20 innovative pullovers, cardigans, vests, and jackets to knit, and I'd also eventually love to knit something from here. After I bought the Henri in Pennsylvania book with, that has a pattern in it, then I had to go on Ravelry to find all the yarns that are recommended for the pattern because they're all discontinued. So I made a like I made a mock-up with the colors that they recommended and then I made a, made a mock-up with the colors that I wanted to use and then I got the yarn and then I started swatching just to get an idea of what the colors would look like and then it just stopped there because I was really intimidated because like I said it is very very extra but this year I would like to tackle it. One thing I've also noticed in knitting patterns over let's say the past 10 years our knitting has gotten a lot looser. This specific pattern as well as like a lot of the vintage patterns I've just noticed are knitted at a much tighter gauge. For example, this one is knitted, knitted with two strands of fingering weight held double, and it has a 25 stitch gauge, which I don't think I could hit that with two strands of fingering weight, and like I'm not even a particularly loose knitter. I'm going to be end up using a strand of fingering and then a strand of mohair. I also think that will kind of help cover up any tension issues I have with intarsia, as it's not something I'm very experienced with, and I'd like to knit like something smaller or something not as intimidating before I do really get started on this project in earnest. This is one of those projects where why I said that I don't think I'm going to complete my whole make nine because even if I do I would like to cast it on this year but I have no expectations of finishing it this year. And then let's move on to the last sweater pattern which like I mentioned, is also another vintage pattern. It is the Brocade Sweater by Calf Facet. And in addition to this Make 9 of sweater patterns, I also made a Make 9 list of nine designers whose patterns I would like to knit. And Calf Facet was basically at the top of the list. He's the whole reason I started the whole... I started looking at all these vintage patterns because his stuff is just so cool and wacky and I love it. One thing about me is I'm a bit of a history nerd and I love learning about the medieval era and I love looking at their tapestries and their colors, yada yada yada. And I guess this isn't really really this isn't really medieval but early modern slash renaissance. Last year I kept getting ads with this specific painting to go to the Frick and when I finally went there and I saw this painting it was even better in real life. It is Portrait of a Woman by Giovanni Battista Moroni. Again apologies for any mispronunciation and it's a very 16th century portrait with like a lot of ruffles and white under the sleeves like peeking through to show how rich you were. My favorite part of the painting is the orange and pink brocade fabric. It's just so beautiful and I'm a little bit blown away whenever these renaissance painters are able to take fabric and then translate it onto paper with paint. It just 
blows my mind. It's a brocade fabric. This pattern is called brocade. Ergo, I need to knit this sweater pattern in a pink and orange combination inspired by this painting. So my yarn choice is Nutidin. I have a bunch of Nutidin in shades of like pink and orange and I guess I have a lot of that Amanita that I mentioned earlier for the sweater number 23. I'm not going to use all of it for that sweater. So my goal is to knit that sweater in various shades of pink and orange and hold them together to get some depth of color to kind of mimic the way that the renaissance like painters got depth of color in their paintings i don't know even i don't even know what i'm saying at this point but it makes sense in my head will i drive myself nuts trying to knit complicated color work in only unspun yarn probably but that is a problem for future me and that wraps up this make nine like I said, there's really no guarantee that I'm going to make all nine of these patterns. Knitting is fun. This list is fun. I'm going to cast on what I want when I want. This list is just kind of like a guideline, especially sometimes I'm like, okay, let me cast something on. And I'm tempted to yarn, run to the yarn store. But with this list, I can be like, nah, I already have things I want to make with the yarn I already have. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I'd also love to know, do you have a make nine? What is on your make nine? If you don't have a make nine and you want to make one, I say go for it. It's not too late. Besides for that, I don't think I have anything else to say. Thanks so much for watching. And if you fancy, you can give this video a like and follow along for the next video. Until then, bye and happy knitting.